Hello everybody and welcome back to Super Tech Services. This is Brian again and we got another video for you guys. So, I just want to talk to you guys about um, the Scandi email issue with Google again. So we had one of our users in the YouTube uh, comment section ask me if I can do a video on this. Um, now I've already done one video on a workaround um, for this and if you don't know what I'm talking about it's the fact that uh, Google or Gmail is not going to alert uh, allow less secure apps anymore so basically what that means if you're signing in um, through your regular Gmail account on a device like a copier or printer um, you're no longer going to be able to scan to email anymore and this is going to take effect uh, May 30th of 2022 so I did a video on how to use SMTP to go and there's also other various um, uh, SMTP mail server providers that will allow you to still use your username and password and they work just fine um, we've only ran into maybe one issue out in the field for some reason but it seems to be an issue with Google um, and uh, SMTP uh, to go service has been great but uh, we did find another workaround through Gmail um, it does require a little bit of money I'm sorry through Google but it is going to require that you pay a little bit of money, but it does work, and it does work uh, perfectly fine. So what am I talking about? These are called app-specific passwords. So Google assigns these. Let me see if I can go to these here. Um, to you if you're a Google Workspace um, customer. So I actually had to pay for this. It wasn't that much. Maybe, I don't, don't quote me. I forget the exact price. Maybe, let me see. Okay, $12 is my upcoming bill here. So as you can see, it's just $12 a month. Um, the only thing you're going to have to do, there you have to do a little bit of configuring. Uh, so I actually had to go and create a domain. Um, I think I did it over here at Na uh, Yeah, I did it over here at Namecheap. Just got a really cheap domain. And then you go ahead and pay for the Google Workplace um, Gmail. And then you link them together. Uh, just doing a couple various settings here. I'm not going to go through that video here. Um, there's plenty of online resources for that. But basically you link them together and then you pretty much have a whole new Gmail that links to your domain. So my new one is called scans at supertext.email and that's it links to my Gmail but it connects to the domain that I bought. After you do that then you go in to one of the users you create and you just go into the security settings and you go to app specific passwords and what do you do let's just create one so say you want to create a password for a machine let's just say Konica and then you hit generate this will generate you a password and you're going to use that password when you're putting in your username and password for your SMTP mail server when you use this password, it pretty much tells uh, Gmail to allow any traffic um, as long as this password, as long as you have this correct password. So, scan to email works perfectly fine. Now, obviously, it's not May 30th yet, so uh, we'll see if this still works after uh, June 1st. But so far, it's been working flawlessly, and we've been using it for a couple weeks. So, we just create a new password for every device we use. And then we put in the, um, in a second I'll show you how it looks on a Konica, what exact settings we use. Um, and then I'll show you uh, pretty much how that works. But anyways, that would be your password. And then you hit done. Make sure you copy that because they don't give it back to you. I'm just going to delete that there. Um, you can see that we just kind of name our copiers uh, certain names. And they all got passwords. And like I said, you cannot click on it and get the password again. Um, so once you click on it, make sure you write it down or just generate a new one. Now, I don't see any um, limitations on how many you can create, which is cool. Most people are probably going to only need one. Now, if you want to pay $10, $12 a month, that's on you. If you don't, you could still use the SMTP to go uh, service. Let me pull that up really quick. And this one is free, or you can pay for a really um, small plan if you'd like. But you see the plans and pricing, and they have the, the free version as well. If you don't really scan to email that much, and you're using just a, if you're using just a, a SMTP printer or scanner for yourself, you probably can just get away with the free version. 
we're a business and we have a lot of customers so we would um, you know we're gonna actually have to pay for ours so with that said that section of the video is all done what I'm gonna do now is switch over to a Konica copier I'm gonna show you guys the settings that we use um, for this to work and then I'll go ahead and put this video out so you guys can uh, hopefully get yours working as well alright let's switch over to the Konica alright so make sure your Konica is networked grab the IP address put it in the browser and press enter that'll bring you to the splash page that you're seeing here just click on administrator and sign in with your administrator password usually it's just one through eight go ahead and click the network tab when you're in in yellow there then on the left hand side click email settings and on the left again email TX SMTP alright now this is the page you want to be on so you just want to make sure that the email is uh, checked on the top left over there and then right where it says please check to enter host name make sure that's checked and type in SMTP dash relay dot gmail dot com under uh, start TLS you're gonna under SSL TLS make sure TLS is set and the port number is going to be 587. So you can pause the video if you need. So once again, SMTP relay at Gmail, start TLS, and port number 587. Then you want to put in your device mail address. This could be a dummy address. So this is not even a real working address. It's fine. You can put any address you want there. And now you want to make sure SMTP authentication is checked. Like I have it here checked on the left and um, I leave all these on which is fine now the user ID this is going to be a real user ID that you created through Google workspace so it will link to your new domain and you, as you can see here um, I might blink this out just a little bit but that will be my username now the password and this is very important that will be the app specific password that you created in Google uh, in Gmail actually that would you will put there do not put your regular uh, password for for your Gmail and then the domain name will be the same one that you bought over at namespace or any any um, area where you purchased your domain name so once again uh, SMTP relay at Gmail start TLS port 587 you can probably use SSL as well uh, device mail name you also need an admin name too but you won't be able to put that in right now just give me a second I'll show you that later just make sure SMTP authentications on your password will be the app specific password and your domain name will be the one that you purchased when you're done with that click on system settings and right under where it says administrator name and email address uh, you want to put an email address in there as well usually a dummy address works um, or you can put a real one it's up to you um, but usually in my um, experience both dummy addresses work perfectly fine but it's up to you all right after you're done with that just go ahead and click OK and then you can uh, I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the copier as well and then we will be done with this video okay so same thing now at the copier just hit menu utility administrator settings and enter your same password one through eight click on network settings email settings email setting then scroll over to host address and you'll see smtp relay.gmail.com and uh, start TLS port 587 and then you're just going to click on detail settings smtp authentication which is on and then the user ID will be the user ID your password is the app specific password and then the domain name that you purchased so I just wanted to show you what it looked like on the machine itself so this should help you if you have any issues with um, not being able to scan to email after May, th uh, May 30th uh, for having a legacy device so hopefully this helps you guys uh, any questions please leave them in the comments and I'll see you guys on the next video Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.